I want some participation. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of images, and uh, I want you to process the image in your mind, and then I want you to shout out what it is that you recognise from this image. Here's the first one. Okay, a bit more kind of corporate, all together. Let's go for the second one. Audi, it's a bit louder. It's good to see Audi recognise more than McDonald's. Anything else? Mitsubishi, fantastic. Starbucks, saw a few on the way in this morning. Twitter, old school Twitter, but it's still there, yeah. BBC iPlayer, fantastic. Amazon, we're recognising all these things. Just from looking at the image, they stand out to us. Ooh, there's a little bit of a wobble there. You know, because I thought I'd make it a little bit harder. And this is my challenge to us as we're thinking at the end of this morning. Are we standing out or are we standing back? Are we easily recognisable or are we vanishing into the background? You see, because I think there might be a challenge for us as Christians, for me as a Christian in my faith. And it's this, that we're called to speak out But actually, more often than not, I'm happy to stay silent or to hide back. I think the crisis is this, that we're facing an identity crisis. We've forgotten who we are. Therefore, as a result, we don't know what to say. It's hard to speak out when I don't know what I'm speaking out for, when I don't know what I believe, when I don't know who I am. So I blend in, I shrink back, I wear my cultural camouflage gear and I just get on with life. That's not the people we've been called to be as God's people. It's a big problem. But it's not a new problem. I don't know if you want to flick just quickly. I'm going to talk from uh, this uh, passage in Judges. And um, this guy called Gideon, you might know, Judges 6. Just follow it with me as I kind of tell you a bit about it. I'm not going to read it. But verse 6 talks about this. The people of Israel, major crisis. The Midianites have overcome them. And the people of Israel shout out to God. They say, help, help, help. The Midianites are stopping them getting any food. They're taking all their livestock. They're making life really hard for God's people. Any resonance? Sometimes it's really hard to live for God in the land that we're living in. So the people cry out, we need a hero, we need a helper, we need someone to turn up. And and the messenger comes to this guy called Gideon and says, you are him. You're the one, you're the hidden hero, you're the mighty warrior. But Gideon is so busy turning round looking for the hero that he misses the important point. What does the messenger say to Gideon? The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. This is what I want to suggest to us this morning in this short time, that there's a hidden hero inside every single one of us. But so often, we're so busy trying to find out who we are, we forget that the God who made us is inside us. He is with us, and that makes us who we are. We've got an identity crisis. We're too bothered about me when we should be bothered about him because he is in me and he makes me do what God wants me to do. There's an identity crisis. When we discover who we are, it's so easy to live for him. Our world today needs people to stand up, to speak out to be confident in who they are. Quick story, a couple of years ago I was on a mission in Canada and uh, I was doing this mission and we'd booked the ice hockey arena and we'd invited a number of big bands from America and Canada to kind of play and we were going to share our faith and, and one of those bands was the band Jar, Jars of Clay and in America they're a big band, a bit of a crossover band, they're known quite well and uh, quite an easy way to start a conversation was I'm with Jars of Clay and we're putting a gig on at the ice hockey arena because everyone was like wow you guys know what you're doing and uh, so I stood to and t- chatting to this guy just outside 
outside um, this hotel. And I said, hi, my name's Dave. I'm from England. Uh, we're putting a gig on at the ice hockey arena. I'm with a band called Jars of Clay. I could tell that this bloke was impressed. He'd heard of Jars of Clay. I, then I said to him, what do you do? I'm with a band called Pilot, he says. Do you want to come and hear my band play? So I said, yeah, as long as you come and hear my band play. So he says, fine, no problem at all. So I turned up at his event on the Wednesday night in the student union bar in this university in Canada. Stood in a queue. I realised other than telling him my name was Dave, I hadn't told him much else, but I was expecting my name to be on the door because I didn't have a ticket. And I stood there in the queue. I got to the front of the queue and I said to the guy, yeah, it's Dave Newton from England and I'm here to see the band. And he says, get lost, you haven't got a ticket. At that moment, the penny dropped in my head and I used the words jars of clay. Suddenly the red carpet was rolled out and I was taken into this event and started to get treated a little bit like I was royalty. And I was thinking this could be great until I started hearing rumours around the venue that jars of clay were also playing the same gig as Pilot. I started to get scared. I was like waiting for the moment when, you know, the, the guy from the front was going to announce this, this kind of special act that we're going to turn up and do a gig or play a song. Because my identity had been questioned, my authority was in question. Because my identity was unsure, I was unsure about what I could do. So I quickly made my apologies, explained the, 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 the crisis, and, and disappeared from the situation. But you get me, there's a challenge. We need to know who we are. Guys, in the last three or four minutes this morning, I want to remind us who we are. I don't know if you um, ever watched that TV series, Hero, Yeah. The first series is about 20 episodes, and this character takes 20 episodes to realize that he is a hero. Guys, I don't want you to waste 20 episodes, 50 episodes of your life, discovering that you are a hidden hero. We have Christ in us. uh, Corinthians says this, listen carefully, we are are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ. We are his ambassadors. The second thing we need to hear is this. We're hidden heroes because in Colossians it says, to this end I labor, I've got to put some work in, but whose power do I work with? His power, which works in me. Yeah? You see what's going on. I'm a hidden hero because Christ's in me. He helps me. He enables me. Ephesians puts it like this. You've probably heard this verse before. Have I missed the Ephesians one? No, it's there. To him who is able to do immeasurably more than I can ever ask or imagine. And again, listen to the relationship. According to his power at work in me. I don't know about you, but I don't want to blend in, shrink back, fade out. I don't want to live in grayscale, the pace of a snail following other people's trail. I don't want my uniqueness unraveled, my purpose poised, my identity nicked. I want to dare to be different, cheer on the champion inside. I want to hollow the hero to stand up and be counted. Recognized, not retreated. Visible, not unseen. Committed to a conspiracy of kindness. Not cowering in cultural camouflage. Living proud, loud, not hidden in a crowd. Someone who hugs the hurting, listens to the lonely, loves the lost so much that we can't leave them where they are. When people ask me who I am, what I stand for, I don't want to be lost for words. I want to be ready to speak out. I want to be a diplomat of justice, a representative of compassion, an envoy of peace, a messenger of forgiveness, a hero with humility, 
an ambassador of the king. Guys, I believe each one of us are hidden heroes. And it's Christ in me that gives me the authority to speak. Amen.